Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Minutes in the Moment. I'm Nico Russell with Ignite Business Resource Group. And today our featured guests are Larry and Tease Bryant with Allegiant Transportation Legacy. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning, good folks. You guys look like you had your coffee this morning. I'm still working on coffee uh, cup number two. Yes, but okay. you guys, mine is green tea. Okay, 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 green tea, green tea. That was a good workout for this morning. Had a good workout. (laughs) We're ready. I um, appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy schedule to meet with us today for Black History Month. Um, We want to definitely make sure that we um, post your website at the end of this conversation, but I want to introduce Allegiant Legacy Transportation today, a logistics and transportation company out of Georgia. So Allegiant Transportation, that's a unique name. Um, Where did you get that name from? Well, um, a couple different ways. One was strictly for marketing purposes, we wanted to start with an A. And the word Allegiant itself means loyal. And then legacy, we wanted, our, our purpose in this season is to leave a legacy. Um, it has been, it was hard for our parents. Um, a legacy wasn't left for them and a legacy wasn't left for their parents. So it's our assignment at this time in our lives to make sure that we're leaving a legacy for those behind us. So that's when we came up with the name Allegiant Trans- Transportation Legacy. That's, that's a good foundational name. And I think um, from the Black community, I think that's historically what we strive to do is to leave a legacy and how appropriate that you added that to the name of your company. So Tease, you are the CEO of Allegiant Transportation Legacy. Um, Tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure, well, I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Um, I love my city. I love Detroit. I love um, our our grind and how we, our work ethic there. And um, I worked as a medical assistant for years there, for 20 years. So my first job really was a medical assistant. And then I was the medical office manager at 20 years old. So I kind of was always in a leadership role. And um, I've done so many different things. And then Larry and I met and we wanted to spend time together. I didn't get married until I was 40 years old. So I wanted to hang out with my boyfriend. I couldn't really do it because we worked so much. He worked a lot. And so we decided let's start a business. And that's when we mentored with the Legion Transportation Legacy and decided, okay, we'll launch this business. But we also wanted to get out of the cold. It was freezing in Michigan. When we decided to move, it was um, 14 below. The day, it was 14 below zero. Our automatic starters wouldn't even start. (laughs) They wouldn't start. Oh, wow. So um, we decided that we're going to launch the business plus move to Georgia. So at the same time of learning a new city, we were launching the business. Oh, wow. That's a lot of transition at one time. A a lot of transition at one time. So Larry, so Tease, if I read right, you started in um, working for the state of Michigan? Yes. Yes. I worked for the state of Michigan, um, the local Clinton Township. Um, branch. I loved it. I worked there for seven years. I w- I started out as a caseworker. I enjoyed the job. I enjoyed the people there. My, it's my favorite place thus far. And um, I u- we used our monies, work, the money we earned on those jobs to really launch business. You can't, we realized you cannot start a business without your own funds because it's, it wasn't easy for us to find funding other places. We didn't, we didn't have grants. There weren't grants available for us. So we needed to use our savings, the money we earned. So I worked there and worked hard. Um, I The last position I had when I left was a refugee specialist where I assisted refugees with getting into the country and benefits and the, the time period, um, I think was within nine months before they were able to operate on their own. I love that job too. And that was the last job that I had before we moved here. Well, you know, I did other things. We, we did a lot um, in order to fund the business. Larry even put up um, flags at cemeteries. <laughs> We had to, we had to find a business on our own. So we kind of pretty much did anything that we could do 
um, in order to get the business going and keep it going while we were working it and running the business. Oh, wow. That's, that's a, that's a lot. And that's a lot of different avenues that you need to take um, in order to finance your business. Now, Larry, where did you initially start? So you're born and raised in Michigan as well? Yes. I was was born actually in a small city called Benton Harbor, Michigan. And our family moved to Detroit when I was about 10 years old. So I pretty much got my roots in Detroit. I grew up and matriculated through the school systems and decided to go to school in Detroit at Davenport University. And basically, all my work experiences in manufacturing. And it's funny because I got a finance degree. And just a little backstory about my uh, degree in finance, I always wanted to be a stockbroker. You know, I went to the library when I was in the seventh grade. We was looking up careers. And I always I saw the career of being a stockbroker because they make, back then, it made like $250,000 a year. And I, all, and I saw that, I said, oh, I want to be a stockbroker when I grew up. So I went through school, and anytime somebody asked me, what do you want to do? I said, I want to be a stockbroker. It wasn't until I got to my first year of college, I interviewed for a company called UPS. And the, um, the interviewer, she asked me, she said, so what do you want to do when you graduate from college? I stuck my chest out real big and like, I want to become a stockbroker. She was like, oh, really? She was like, oh, what's your major? I'm like, marketing? She's like, hmm, don't you think you're supposed to be in finance? And I rubbed my chin just like this. I said, oh, maybe I'm supposed to be in finance. I switched my, uh, switched my major to finance. Six months before I graduated, I interviewed with a company. I got hired on and realized that I didn't want to be a stockbroker. <laughs> and I say all this to say that if you ever want to do something, you got to research it and what it entails. And I knew my personality didn't fit that mold. So I stayed in manufacturing. I had probably 25 years of my work experiences in manufacturing. And before we left Michigan, I worked at a company and we, we made seating systems for the Ford F-150. And, and that's pretty much my experience. And once we decided to leave Michigan, I flew, I was flying down to Georgia. I was looking for different opportunities. And I realized something, Nico, that these jobs wasn't paying what they were paying in Michigan. So that's when I decided with my wife that, hey, we probably need to do something different. I can't work and make it nickels and dimes, you know. We, we can grow something valuable and essential and leave it a legacy. And so on my, on, from, my, from my perspective, that's when the Legion Transportation legacy was actually being concreted into us what it is now. That's interesting. Um, I, I heard a couple of different things in that. In that. So you had to step out on faith and say, you know what, you did your own personal assessment and said, you know what, this isn't giving me what I thought it was supposed to give. Mm-hmm. So let me think about what I want to do. And Tish, you mentioned that, that work-life balance of spending time, you know, with your husband and being able to, you know, as a new couple kind of grow out of all the industries though, that you can think of, and you were in manufacturing, right? That's the knowledge basis. You were um, in social work, so to speak, Tease, in, in your job with the state. So why transportation? What made you seek out that business? Well, we researched. So we looked into medical equipment, medical supplies. Um, we looked into nonprofit organizations. We wanted to sustain something forever. We wanted it to last. So what would always be there? And that was transportation. So every everything that we started to do in the beginning led us to this, this place. So we know that um, people need, children needed to go to school. Okay, so we can focus on focus on school transportation, private school transportation, and also airport shuttles. And it kept us busy. It kept us busy. We continuously, um, we've never advertised, not once. All of our business was word of mouth. People would hear about our stellar customer service because we provide over the top customer service. We will not settle for anything less with every customer that we have. We're giving them all that we have. And for us still, the customer is always right. So we're making sure that we're giving 
um, great service. So that's why we end up leading into transportation because we knew it was sustainable. It wasn't going anywhere. And this is something that we can pass on. Oh, wow. So you started your business in transportation, airport shuttles, school shuttles. And when did you switch to the um, type of transportation that you do now with um, supply chain? So that's a great question. Thank you for asking. So when the pandemic or COVID happened, it pretty much decimated 90 to well, pretty, almost 100% of our business. And so that that was a uneasy. That was a real uneasy time. Like we didn't we didn't know what what the future was gonna hold. How long this pandemic had to last. So we decided to pivot. It was like what can we what can we go into now? That's pretty much pandemic proof. And so we we looked at trucking. We did the did the pros and the cons. You know the benefits and the you know what can you know benefit us as a company or you know and keep us keep us sustaining. So the trucking industry seemed very lucrative, even with its pitfalls and, you know, not enough African-Americans being in the business itself. It was just a great opportunity, you know, cause we had to pivot either we stay where we was at making zero or we pivot, step out on faith. And that's what we did. And hence, this is the resurgence of Elysian transportation legacy. Oh, wow. So I, I see that being agile, you know, being able to pivot when things get um, when things get uncertain, when your business, you know, you have to switch your business model to accommodate your future endeavors and things that you want to do. So what are some of the things that you see on the horizon for Allegiant Transportation Legacy, um, given that we're still in COVID, mm -hmm. um, there is still a need for transportation? But being on your next, I guess the next step in your business, having kind of grown that legacy and had your hand and pulse on your, your finger on the pulse of the industry, what are some of the things you see that are up and coming for you? Next, definitely for us is um, warehousing, distribution, and driverless vehicles. Nice. Yes, the, the future. We're staying ahead of the curve. Uh, we learned in the business that you have to be ahead. You have to think progressively in order to be able to continuously function through the years. So um, our next step is to also have our own warehouse. So not only are we shipping the products, we have a place for the customers to store their products and we can cross dock, dock also. So that's, that's the next step. Um, we're currently working on that. We're currently looking for the land and building our own warehouse. So this is this is um, a dream come true for us. And it wasn't easy. It's not easy being an African-American or a woman in this business. Sometimes there's some cause that I have to give to Larry because the respect level is different when there's a female. And we're in the South, so that's totally different from, from our my home in the North. Um, so I've had to give some, give some phone calls to Larry so that he can handle them. And... Even when we're calling, we have two female drivers. Even with our, when we're calling about losing the drivers, they're like, okay, well, give me him his name. Um, they're just assuming that all the time, all of our drivers are males. And that's not true. We also have female drivers. So we're in an industry that's dominated by men, but women can also do the job and do it well. And so just to I, piggyback, pick a back, oh, excuse me. No, just ahead. to piggyback on what my CEO said about the future of Allegiant Transportation, and all those things that she said was great. Also, in addition to what she's saying, we also are launching in the future Allegiant International. So I just want everybody to be prepared, get ready for Allegiant International. Not only are we going to be shipping and delivering loads um, um, nationally, but internationally. So that's that's on the horizon as well. Oh, wow. So international, meaning that Allegiant Transportation is looking to go global? Definitely. Looking to go global. Definitely. There's a lot of textiles being shipped from um, South Africa. And we've had opportunities to work with people there. 
um, in South Africa. However, we're trying to learn that market first. We don't jump out there unless we were researching and we've learned the market and we have covered every piece of this supply chain as it relates to international shipping. So that's what we're working on right now. Oh, wow. That's um, so foundationally. Um, I know that you're both CELTs and COO, um, Larry, but how many people do you have both formally in your, um, in your um, business for support, but also foundationally from your families? Do you have that support on both ends to help your sustain, um, you sustain your business? Definitely. We have a ton of family support. I mean, parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews. Um, when we started the business, we've had people that had their, so uh, my sister is a hairstylist. She donated her time in the mornings before she went to see her clients to help because when, with the trucking business, it moves very fast. It's very fast paced. There's constant phone calls. We had you know, four trucks at once. So a ton of just um, needing different staff members. So yes, we have a, a ton of family support. From my, my side, Larry's side, also, you know, our family works here in the business too. Our, our drivers aren't, but um, our administrative staff. So we have, we have our four drivers who are amazing right now. And um, we have a, a marketing director. We have our admin staff dispatch and then Larry and I. So we have a ton of support and our community support. McDonough, Georgia has supported us 100%. This is a place to grow. Um, we receive even our church, our church here, of course, our church in, our church in Detroit, um, Liberty Temple, and also our church here, Tabernacle of Christ, have really supported us in our business. So if you're listening to your story, all of this has been a faith walk for yes. you guys in moving, relocating, starting a business. Um, what are the things that keep you guys up at night um, as you're growing your business, as you have a future focus on where you want to be globally? What are those things that you find are um, giving you pause? as you move forward. So Nico, that's funny that you would say that. I would have to say at this point, nothing. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Because I was a worry wart when Larry and I first got together. And he talked to me, we talked a lot about faith and also about planning for the moment. And I would stay up at night and I would see him sleeping. I would be like, hey, we have to do this. And there's so many things going on. Why are you sleeping? Why are you resting? And he said, because nothing's going to change at two o'clock in the morning. So guess what? We're going to sleep. And now my sleep is so peaceful. <laughs> my sleep is so peaceful because I'm not worried about anything. What I, I do feel the pressure to make sure that we make it because there's a ton of people looking at us, relying on us. People tell us all the time, we're looking to make sure we want to, we want to be like you all. We want to have the business, we want to have the marriage. So we have to put in, a, Larry and I have to put in a lot of work. We have to do a lot of a lot of things to make sure that we're not letting anybody down. So I feel the pressure of my community, the pressure of my family, the pressure of other um, people that I launched out there in business, the pressure of women that just want to have a dream and have never stepped out there to do it. I feel that kind of pressure and it it motivates me to make sure that I, every day I'm giving it all that I have, that I'm not giving in to how I may feel in my emotions, how, how um, what's happening at a moment. We're in a trucking business. So every day there's an issue. There's an issue with a shipment. There's an issue with a, a shipper, a receiver, a driver, a trucking company, traffic every single day. So I have to be resilient. I have to be able to bounce back regardless of what's taking place. Man, I want to give, give her a high five right now. Go ahead. Give her a high five. Oh, man. So always in order. Always in order. <laughs> when you look at... Um, I'll call you guys the dynamic duo. I think it's great when you have a strong um, couple that can sustain and, and support each other in the business and, and grow as you have. Do you have any mentors in the business or outside of the business that you kind of look to for guidance? Yes. So we have um, people that I realize it's about business. The, a purse, if a person can run a successful business and can it, it can be replicated, they can do that with anything. So our mentors right now are actually in 
in finance. And um, it's a, a beautiful, and they're also a married couple. So they, under, and they work together. So they understand every part of, of working together all day, living together, sleeping together, making money together, making mistakes together. So those are our mentors. Do you, um, I think as African-Americans, we also look for supporting each other as we grow and reaching back and pulling people along with us. And I heard you say that you have family that are a part of your staff that is part of your legacy. Um, yes. Do you also plan to incorporate any type of um, reach back into your business, whether it's within the community, uh, a mentorship or any other business focus? Constantly. So every, when we're looking for products, when we're looking for everything that we need in our office, we're looking for small minority owned businesses first. Um, that, that's woman owned businesses, black owned businesses, Hispanic owned businesses. We're always looking to support small businesses. We know how difficult it is to be a small business. So yes, we give, we're give, we um, believe in our philanthropic efforts. So giving within our local community, um, supporting children, just even the agency we're, we're adopt, when adopting right now. So our agency that we're adopting through, we also support them. So yes, we definitely believe in giving back and giving back to our community. It's interesting that you say um, the reach back and, and giving back um, is important to who you are. I think you started from your work in social work um, with that give back and then also, you know, how you're moving with the direction of your business. What, and you mentioned black owned businesses and some of the challenges that they have. What are some of the things that you think are um, maybe unique to being a black owned business? The, sub, the support system. And that's because Larry and I have a diverse group of friends. So we know what that support system looks like to other cultures. And if, if they call a particular company, this company is much more willing to give a different culture sometimes an opportunity. For us, we find that if there's an opportunity given and it's between us and someone else, that's not maybe African-American, it usually goes to them because they wanna help their own community. So um, our concern is that we need to be in other positions so that we can help each other. I think that support um, is, is important, especially for the black community and kind of our history yes. of, of being separate and kind of finding our way. And, you know, that's something that maybe not unique to cultures in general of having that, but I think here in the US, we have a different um, perspective, a different foundation. And so um, it's good to know that um, that in the part of your business, that legacy part of wanting to leave a footprint, wanting to create something that's sustainable um, is important as you move forward in, in the progress of your business. Right. Yeah. Um, because we couldn't compare to 200 years of, of success. Some families have had 200 years or more, or more of, of riches, of wealth. And there's no comparison. There's no comparison. It, I mean, we could, there's no catch up. So we're, we're really trying to do all that we can to make sure that we change that. That a hundred years from now, our legacy can say we've had a hundred years of success. Right. Change, it's all about changing the narrative. Yes. Changing the narrative. Yeah, that's, we're in a season of change, a lot of change, but definitely changing the narrative. I think every generation, um, we, when we know better, we do better and that we have seen it done right. We've seen it done wrong and we want to do better. And right. I think an important foundation um, of our, our culture is making sure that we do better than the, the generation before us. Yes. Now, when you look at capital, I, I, I know you've mentioned you guys kept your full-time job, like you were still working yes. um, before you started the business. Um, I've heard that capital can be an issue um, for Black-owned businesses mm -hmm. yes. and trying to um, get capital for even starting businesses. What are some things that you 
um, what advice for somebody that is looking to start a business or, you know, in that space, like some of those issues that you find with trying to get the capital? Well, the good thing for us is that we had really good credit and have really good credit. So we could get personal loans, but we could not get any business loans. So we had to use a lot of our 401k, a lot of the money that we use for our retirement to fund the business. I would tell anyone that's starting their own business, save, save, save. You need to have a year's salary of your salary of being able to pay your mortgage, uh, car note, insurance, everything that you need, have that for a year. If you have that, it will take the pressure off of pushing the business forward. I tell people, we tell people all the time, if you have to live out of the business when you start it, you, you shouldn't run a business right now. You need to wait until you've saved enough money that the business can operate on its own and you can operate, you can still pay all your personal bills. It's important to have, it. you need money to make money. And in addition to what the lovely CEO always said, <laughs> that you want to make sure when you start your business, that you start building business credit, that you get your Duns and Bradstreet number. That's so important. So you can start building your business credit because after a while, you don't got to go to the banks and the lenders. They're going to come to you like, hey, what can I give you? So I want to tell anybody that's starting a business, you know, when you start your business, establish your business credit. You know, a lot of times we, as African-Americans, you know, we start a bit, oh, I don't want to do that. I'll better get you some business credit. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to say this. It, it might not be political credit. The best money to use is somebody else's money. <laughs> <laughs> so, so true. So true. Yeah. <laughs> so true. So true. I think my last question, and this is more about you guys and not the business. I think when you, there can be difficulties when you work with the person that you're married to, and that sometimes there's blurred lines between business and personal. So how do you guys make sure that you keep the lines from blurring and that you have that work-life balance um, to sustain you so that you don't get drained and that the business ups and downs don't make it your personal up and downs? Well, we just fight when no one is around. We kind of like saving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> truth to that. Truth to that. So, so, oh, let me let me take. So, in business, when you when you working with a spouse, you cannot take stuff personally in business and let it carry over to the home life. So you got to understand, like, hey, that was a business conversation not a personal conversation. And so when you realize that, it's a little bit easier to go home and you know, we cut that off at the, at the business aspect of it. So just make sure that you're not allowing the business conversation or business to overspill into your personal. Like say if I said something off the cuff to my wife in, at the office, you know, I know it's, it's easier said than done, but shouldn't let that spill over to personal your communication with each other will tell if you're balancing work life right so your marriage i'm sure you know it so when when our communication is off i have to think about okay what have we done to work on our marriage oh we didn't go to we didn't have date night last friday because we have date night every week we didn't have date night last friday let's make sure that we have date night where we're communicating with, with each other as a husband and wife it's easy when you're when you're working so hard in this business to lose the romanticism but you have to consistently work at the romanticism um we just made it through valentine's day and and and, I, and I, larry tried something different i will usually all of my gifts are um, laid out in the morning when I wake up. It's my birth for my birthday, for um, Mother's Day, for Valentine's Day. Well, I woke up and there was nothing there, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" <laughs> so I made it to the office, and my office was decorated with balloons and 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 food, and I love my snacks and roses. And then when I got home, um, he had rose petals everywhere, and I love doing rose petals on the bed and and gifts there and my Italian twine watch who's also another nice small own very business. Nice. yes so putting in that effort just made me feel really good because 
it, it's hard. It's hard. So it's just going out of your way to make sure your partner feels special. Oh, <laughs> and, and you have to, it has, it has to be first. So for us, it's God, family, then the business. God, family, and then the business. Yes. So are there any, um, any final advice that you want to give someone, anyone, it doesn't matter if they're black, white, purple, green, um, advice as they, if they were looking to start a business, if they were looking to um, take a leap and pivot in their career, what would be some of that advice um, that you would like to embark upon people? One thing I would like to say, if you start a business, do something that you love. And I say that because even in this truck industry, if I wasn't getting paid one cent, I love doing this. I, you see, if you don't have the love and the passion to do it, nine times out of 10, this is not going to last long. That's true. So you got to have a love and a passion to do it, you know. So love what you're doing. You know, I'm going to start a business, hey, I want to start a business making shirts. I better love, I better love making shirts. I want to start a business, a bit, you know, cooking dishes and foods and different stuff. I better love doing that. Because you don't love it, you're gonna get tired of it. You're gonna, and you know what? That was just something I I, I wanted to do and I got over it. And now I want to do something else. So, like, we've been in this business six years. We love what we're doing. Even with some of the challenges, we love what we're doing. And we're gonna continue to love what we're doing as we get bigger, as we get better, as we get to bless more people with opportunities. We love what we're doing right now. We're going to love what we're doing in the future. And that's awesome. Oh. <laughs> and my advice is to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. That's easier said than done. If you believe that you could have the number one um, trucking company in the, in the country, you can. Step out there, believe in yourself. So many people, oh, I'm too old to do this. You're never too old to do anything. You're never too old to do anything. And a lot of businesses, you don't need startup money to do so, to start it. So just believe in yourself, launch out there and do it. I don't want to die with any regrets. So I'm giving it all that I have. So just make sure that you don't have any regrets. That would be my advice. Well, thank you guys for your time, your passion. Keep on trucking. I <laughs> wish you the best in your endeavors and growth and prosperity. Thank you again for sharing this moment in the minute, this minute in the moment. And um, I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, everybody. Bye -bye. <laughs>